Hello, my name is Salman Hamid and I'm Assistant Professor of Integrated Science and Humanities at Hampshire College. I'm Kevin Anderson. I teach courses in film and anthropology at the University of Massachusetts and this is Film Autopsy. Hello and welcome to a film autopsy of PINA, new documentary film by filmmaker Vim Vendors. Need to say first off, this is a documentary shot in 3D, and I think it really delivers. Um, Vendor's choice of doing it in that kind of image making is really spectacular because the subject matter is uh, Pina Bausch and her dance company, who's a German choreographer. And it's really more, it's in the category for best documentary this year, and it certainly is a piece of nonfiction, but it's more of a performance piece than it is a, a documentary exploring kind of the history and the when, how, and why of Pina Bausch. Uh, do you want to comment a little bit about it, the kind of you know stylistics of this film? Yeah, I mean, this is a very interesting use of a 3D. Uh, certainly, we are seeing this year where people are actually using 3D in a different way than simply just uh, like, you know, animals coming at from the screen at you <laughs> and stuff like that. So we saw Cave of Forgotten Dreams uh, where yeah. Herzog fantastic. did a fantastic job of uh, taking you to the Chauvet Caves yeah. and bringing out the three-dimensional aspects of those drawings. Mm -hmm. And here uh, in Pina, uh, again, Wim Wenders does something amazing and almost brings dance alive. You are seeing it on the screen, but three dimensions really bring out the depth Right. And this particular choreographer, which I mean, I uh, have to say I wasn't familiar with her, but, but her work, uh, which involves uh, sort of like a lot of objects. So in one of them, there is a waterfall. In one of them, there is dirt. Uh, and oh, then, the, yeah, the whole dance floor is full of this very fine dirt. Different it, yeah, aspects really of, uh, uh, of those things that come in. And with this 3D, it really brings that out mm -hmm. and, and, and really brings you out. What the dancer is trying to do mm -hmm. and trying to say. So I think it's wonderfully done and, mm -hmm. and a spectacular uh, soundtrack uh, that goes along oh. with this dance. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. I think it's phen phenomenal. I, I got home that night after we saw the film and, and ordered the soundtrack on Amazon. I, just, I was totally blown away by, uh, by the musical choices in it. I will have to say that really, I think all the dance numbers in the film are choreographed for the camera or at least with the camera in mind. So it's not a series of performances, uh, of live performances, but it's namely you know, performances where you know the camera is right there on stage with them. And he's using multiple, it's like a multiple camera shoot for a lot of these different dance performances. Some are shot outside, um, some are right in the middle of, a, of, of an island in a uh, middle of a busy street. Uh, so very inventive choice of location, uh, musical cues, costuming, and just a real great celebration of dance, artistry, and the human body. And one of the other things that's added to this is, I don't know if we can call them interviews, because you will cut, uh, vendors will cut away to uh, kind of, you know, headshots of some of the principal members of Pina's dance company, and they will not be speaking. They'll just be kind of, as if they're listening to themselves talking, because what's on the soundtrack is some commentary and some testimonials from these people. And so, it's like we're listening to their voice at the same time they are listening to themselves talk. And I thought that was a very innovative touch, uh, a nice break from the kind of standard documentary talking head. Although, if I remember right, in the, in the car ride home, you had a slight different opinion about the well, use of those. It's, it's complicated. I mean, my immediate reaction, uh, so, so they come off as very contemplative and, and thinking about it, which is, I think, great. And um, uh, but to me, it also had the sense of uh, deification of Pina. And, uh, and, but I should provide this in context. I mean, uh, it may come off as a little bit harsh, but actually the context makes it a little bit different because uh, the originally Wim Wenders had planned to make this movie with Pina. And actually, that was supposed to be a different film because they right. were actually coming right. with the project together. Yep. Uh, but she died unexpectedly. You know, uh, she died Three days after she was diagnosed with cancer, right, and, uh, and just and, and in fact, initially he actually shelved the plans for the filmmaking, but then the dancers decided to come together, like no, no, but they should still make the film, and so the film actually is different than what it would have been with Pina, mm -hmm. and 
it is soon after she died. And, and, and so when they are talking or like, you know, when you hear them speak, it almost seems like, well, nothing could be there without Pina. And I think, I mean, I get it why they were saying that because it was so soon and all that stuff. Uh, but I think without knowing that context, it also looked like, oh my God, it's just like, you know, we don't have any agency. It's all Pina. It's all almighty Pina. Again, so, so that was a little bit turned off. In fact, but I liked, it wasn't in all interviews. In some instances, it was more about just silences. And in some sense, yeah. I actually really liked uh, because, yeah. and, 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 and sometimes they gave actually information about how that particular dance, for example, was created. And I thought that was very useful. Well, what came up uh, in a number of these uh, dancer testimonials was how little verbal direction Pina Bausch would give her dancers, that she would often sit at a table right there on the dance floor, watching the performance being constructed, and it was more like with her eyes. She would stare at people and they'd, they'd be like, oh, okay, I guess I need to do that again or do it differently. She was, so I get the impression that she as a choreographer and, and, and dance instructor was very focused on pushing the artist to find the right move, the right timing, the right rhythm. And it was her job to kind of be there and, and, and move them along that trajectory in terms of finding. There was this one guy that um, he says that she just said, you, you need to find who this character is. I can't tell you who it is. So yeah. I, I think the deification of her, I mean, it, it is kind of in a in a memorial type of type of sense. I think at a funeral, you wouldn't have people, you know, providing criticism of the person who just passed away as well. So I agree with you. With we knew that she had already passed away right. and everything, but maybe the film does uh, run that risk. But, but I, it's a nice touch. Well, uh, talking about that, about how she choreographed. I mean, I was reading about it that she would ask the dancers uh, questions and they would have to respond, for example, their answers had to be in a form of dance. Mm -hmm. And then she would sort of like, you know, say, for example, I mean, whether this was done well or this answer was not very clear. So I think that's, there is this mm -hmm. element to it. Uh, I should mention uh, one other thing, and that is, you know, I mean, one of, some of the dance pieces, I mean, they are spectacular. One of them, Cafe Mueller, that was one of those yeah. really amazing chairs ones where there are chairs the and the dancers are dancing blind or mm -hmm. with the eyes closed yeah. and uh, not everybody but like some people are moving chairs right. in front of them but most of the dancers are moving blind it's and spectacular it's almost operatic you know it's, it's the the narrative and the and and the dance is just breathtaking yeah. with that so yeah. so if you are thinking oh my god is it going to be a movie of, with the long <laughs> dance sequence thing. No, it, it's actually quite There's thrilling. Probably over a dozen dance numbers in the film, and so it, it seems to always be changing. And outside sequences are oh, absolutely yeah. gorgeous. I think we could recommend this film too. I mean, it's 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 gorgeously shot. The uh, again, the musical cues are fantastic, and it's it's a really innovative use of 3D, as you said. I think uh, general audiences. I was actually surprised this one was PG. But, but here is my that's my big thing. It's like but here is my know, question. Why are these films PG? This should be G. Is it a documentary? Is it a documentary? Well, it has been that's, nominated. That's the last thing. Um, I think a film like this really challenges the Motion Picture Academy's uh, definition of what is a documentary, what qualifies as a documentary, and this is really more of a performance, um, experimental piece of cinema. It is a work of nonfiction, but so much is choreographed for the camera. Um, I wouldn't particularly, if I was teaching a class, I wouldn't necessarily refer to this as a documentary. I would refer to it as a performance. Because we piece. had an am am another amazing film, The Mill and the Cross, uh, which yeah. is about a painting. And so if you haven't checked that out, check that out also, yeah. which, which is again a piece, an art piece. Right. And I think this is more Come to life to through, that. through cinema. Right. Yeah, no, so I agree. Compared to this, uh, so. and, and instead they should have. Um, Nominated one of the Herzog films, both of the Herzog <laughs> We've films. We've already all project. Come on, name. we need to put that to bed. Okay, We've all right. Talked all right. about Herzog. Okay, okay. All right, fine. It's, it's un unlucky for him. Okay, uh, the go check out Pina. Yes, Pina, not Pina. Pina.